Okay, let's get started. Good morning, everyone. My name is Samantha Roan. I am an education programs assistant for the special education division. Focus monitoring and technical assistance unit five for the California Department of Education. Today, we are going over the special education resource leads request for application. This is a technical assistance webinar. So we're going to go over the grant and the process of applications. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat or in the question and answers portion. Um, John Birch is here to answer some questions and then myself and Aaron Rodriguez, another consultant with my team, will be going over everything today. Um, can you see the interpreter? Yes. Okay, good. All right, let's get started. All right, so an overview for this grant, the Special Education Resource Leads Grant Request for Application can be found on the California Department of Education CDE webpage, https colon slash slash www.cde.ca.gov slash fg slash r18 slash s-p-e-d-r-e-s-o-u-r-c-e L-E-A-D-R-F-A dot A-S-P. That is where you will find all the information. If you have questions regarding the RFA, please submit them through the webinar chat function. An S-E-R-L RFA questions and answers document will be available on the CDE S-E-R-L grant RFA webpage for reference. Additional questions regarding this webinar or application process can be emailed to the CDE at Special Education Leads at cde.ca.gov. Background. In 2017, the California School Dashboard, Dashboard was launched to help districts identify strengths and weaknesses. In response to the needs illuminated through the dashboard, California developed the California Statewide System of Support, SSOS. This system of support is designed to build local capacity and assist local educational agencies in identifying and eliminating inequities as part of the continuous improvement process. The special education resource leads were established initially through Senate Bill 511, then enacted as California Education Code EC 52073 in 2018, then titled Special Education Local Plan Area, SELPA, Content Leads, and System Improvement Leads. In June of 2022, the California legislature passed Assembly Bill 181, which amended Education Code Sections 52073.1 and 52073.2 to update language regarding augmented funding, a focus on alter alternate dispute resolution, ADR, and a partnership with family empowerment centers, and the inclusion of county offices of education as eligible applicants. Program purpose. The CDE, working in collaboration with the CCEE, California Collaboration for Educational Excellence, is authorized to establish a process to select, subject to the approval of the Executive Director of the State Board of Education, SBE, in consultation with the Department of Finance, CELPAs, COEs, or a consortium thereof, to serve as special education resource leads to work with the lead agencies selected pursuant to EC sections 52073.1 and 52073.2, and other county offices of education, COEs, to improve pupil outcomes as part of the SSOS. The process to select SERL grantees shall ensure that no more than 10 special education resource leads are selected to provide specific expertise on special education issues within the statewide system of support. At least three resource leads shall be selected in a manner to ensure statewide representation and focus directly on building local and regional capacity to support local educational agencies in achieving the goals, actions, and services identified in their local control and accountability plan. Funding available, one. This application covers the grant period beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2028. 
Funds are available to each applicant based on the application and proposed budget. The total grant budget for this RFA is $12 million per year. $2 million annually, or EC 5372.2, million annually is specifically budgeted toward the lead selected for ADR. The SERL grantees are selected for a term not longer than five years. Continued funding for the second, third, fourth, and fifth years is contingent upon a favorable annual review by CDE slash CCEE of each lead's progress on goals and deliverables. Funding available to Grant awards will be determined based on each scored application and proposed budget submitted. Grant awards issued thereafter are made contingent upon the availability of annual funds. If the California legislator takes action to reduce or defer the annual funding upon which this grant award is based, then awards will be amended accordingly. Eligibility requirements one. Individual applicants must be a COE, SELPA, or appropriate partnership or consortia of COEs and or SELPAs. Applications for the ADR lead must also partner and apply with one or more family support organizations that provide support for families of people with disabilities. All applicants must provide statewide representation and meet these requirements. Demonstrate expertise in both the State Priorities and Federal Individuals with Disabilities Education Act indicators and an understanding of the relationship between them. Ability to build capacity of other SELPAs or COEs to provide effective assistance and support LEAs under the state and federal priorities. Capacity and willingness to work with and coordinate other lead agencies within the statewide system of support to provide coordinated assistance and supports to LEAs to improve performance and close the achievement gap for students with disabilities. Four, demonstrate knowledge and expertise in the research and evidence of implementation and improvement sciences, willingness to establish measurable goals for improved performance across multiple measures, ability to define a clear vision for a collaborative addressing the needs of LEAs across the state, define the specific role each member LEA in the partnership will hold in contributing to statewide coverage, develop a plan for implementing those roles, and demonstrate expertise and capacity to implement the plan. Seven, make a compelling case for the requested funding and explain how the services will be evaluated. In addition, our eligibility requirements three. In addition, each lead role will have its own specific eligibility criteria and requirements. This RFA is seeking applicants to fill the following roles. Individualized education plan best practices, one lead, Universal design for learning, one to two leads. Capacity builder, three to five leads. English learners, one lead. Alternate dispute resolution, one lead that must partner with an FEC, a family empowerment center. Full descriptions of the requirements for each role can be found in the RFA section B. Thank you, Samantha. Section five, project requirements. In accordance with EC section 52073.2, grant applicants shall, shall serve local education areas providing technical assistance, ensure statewide representation and focus on building special education local plan area capacity to support local and educational agencies and achieving the goals, actions, and services identified in their local control and accountability plans. Section B identifies the knowledge and expertise all applicants must demonstrate in accordance with EC section 52073 and details the services each applicant must provide in accordance with EC section 52073.2 as a condition of funding. Ongoing communication, collaboration, and partnership with the CDE and other leads are integral. Applicants must attend and participate in regular meetings convened by the CDE and CCEE as appropriate. Section 6, six um, Administrative Requirements. Reporting, the lead will participate in regular meetings to be convened by the CCEE and the CDE 
Additionally, the following regular reporting will be required. An annual project plan by each grantee, a quarterly fiscal activity report, a quarterly project report, mid-year reviews, interviews, grantees shall utilize templates for the reports and developed by the CDE and CCEE. An an annual project plan outlining short and long-term goals, including methods of evaluating progress related to the work is also required. Quarterly project reports must describe the progress the grantee has made towards achieving the goals established in the annual project plan, as well as identification of next steps for continued progress, growth, and sustainability of the work in the field. Grant award notification, payments, and indirect cost rate, ICR. Selected grantees must sign and return the grant award notification before any work may begin, and disbursement of funds can be made. Grant payments are issued up to the reporting expenditures. ICR is the approved CDE rate for the fiscal year in which the funds are spent. Section 7, Selection Process. All applications will be screened to ensure the components as described in Section 4, Application Procedures and Processes. A complete application is submitted via email. The application narrative should be submitted as a PDF file. The PDF document should not exceed 15 pages. Applicants may separately attach supporting evidence. Points will be awarded based on completeness and responsiveness of the application to each of the required application components. The number of grant awards will be based on the number of eligible applications and the amount of available funding. Final approval of grant awards for successful applications will be decided by the CDE Special Education Division. Section 8, Application and Budget Scoring. A, face page, not scored. B, vision, expertise, and proposed activities, 30 points. C, planning, implementation, and evaluation activities, 40 points. D, metrics to monitor the progress of proposed activities, 20 points. E, budget and budget narrative, 10 points. All right, section nine, application format and submission requirements. One, interested applicants must submit full application for the SERL grant to the CDE Special Education Division by email at specialeducationleads at cde.ca.gov by 5 p.m. on January 31st, 2023. Use Special Education Leads application for the subject line. The applicant must copy and paste the narrative questions into a separate document to be included as a part of the application package. The application process is conducted by providing a PDF containing the information requested for the application narrative via email. The PDF file name should contain the applicant's name. The file size is limited to 15 pages and one MB. Applicants may separately attach supporting evidence. The last last submitted application will be the one considered for review. The CCEE and the CDE are not able to modify the application information after it is submitted. Incomplete or late applications will not be considered. Okay. Application format and submission requirements too. Page length and formatting requirements will be evaluated. Applications that do not adhere to the requirements may be disqualified for review. Typed applications in portable document format, PDF, font, Arial 12 or Times New Roman 12. Applications must follow numerical sequencing outlined in RFA. The application narrative is limited to 15 pages, 1 MB formatted to 1 inch margins. All pages, including budget documents, must be numbered sequentially. Next steps. Interested applicants must submit a full application for the SERL grant 
to the CDE Special Education Division by email at specialeducationleads at cde.ca.gov by 5 p.m. on January 31st, 2023. Review Section 4 of the RFA in order to adhere to all required deadlines. Refer back to Sections 4 and 5 of the RFA before submitting your application. Any SERL RFA questions and answer documents will be available on the CDE SERL grant RFA webpage for reference. Additional questions regarding this webinar can be emailed to CDE at specialeducationleads at cde.ca.gov. So now will be the time that we have. Um, set aside to have some questions and answers addressed. I believe some have already been addressed in the Q&A portion. Um, if you do have any, please make sure to type them in the Q&A portion, not in the chat. We're going to go ahead and answer some questions and answers that we have received through email. So questions and answers document for RFA. We will be adding any additional questions to this document and it will be available on the RFA webpage um, starting next week. Question one, what is the budget maximum per content area per project period? There is no budget maximum. However, consider when making your budget that unless you are applying for the ADR lead specifically, you will be sharing the $10 million budget with six to nine other grantees that is yearly. Budgets can be adjusted after the application process. And then part A to that question, is a separate proposal needed for alternate dispute resolution ADR? Each COE or SELPA or consortia will submit an application for one resource lead. The application is the same for all leads. Second question on the Q&A document, does the $12 million allocation include the $2 million set aside for ADR? And the answer is yes. $2 million is included in the $12 million yearly total. Question three, what are the formatting guidelines other than a 15-page limit for the narrative? Narratives should be in 12-point, aerial, or times two Roman font with one-inch margins. Question four. The narrative is limited to 15 pages. Can you please confirm that this page limit does not include the budget, letters of support, or other attachments? Per RFA Section 5, Part A, applicants may separately attach supporting evidence. The applicant information and budget information is submitted via email and is included in this instruction package for reference. Question 5. Where in the application would you like the signature? You may include the signature at the end of the application narrative. Question six. Is the contact information to be copied, pasted onto the, an actual cover page, or are you wanting this in the narrative? The application budget information includes a section for contact information. You may include it on the cover page if you also prefer. Question seven. Is there a specific budget sheet to use? RFA Section 5 Part B has a budget overview. Applicants may use any budget form as long as it addresses all of the required listed parts listed in the RFA. Be sure to include all items for budget codes listed under 2023 to 24 budget information requested by the online application. Question eight, what is your expectation around the partic participation of the family parent organization? How is their compensation to be delivered? So only the ADR lead is required to partner, partner with a family empowerment center. If you are not applying for the ADR lead, it will be up to your organization's discretion to partner with an FEC or not. Their compensation will be included in your budget totals and dispersed directly to the grantees. Um, we did get a question. Uh, question four, can you please clarify, is the budget included in the 15 pages? No, it is not. Some questions and answers that we have already received. Um, the PDF of this webinar, uh, as well as the question and answer document, 
will be reviewed by the CDE and posted by next week. The 15 page limit is just the narrative. You may include the budget documents and other supporting documents separately, but they do need to be numbered. Collaboratives will need to submit one application uh, per lead. What types of metrics are you looking for in the capacity builder leads? Can you provide examples that you would find most useful? You may find a list of all of the metrics that are asked for in each lead, including capacity builders in the RFA. Um, there are lots of bullet points that you can see uh, what the CD is specifically looking for. Um, do you foresee any potential issues with FEC partnerships if there are none in your geographic area? Um, I will have to get back to you with that. Um, the FEC partnership is only required if you are trying to submit for the ADR lead, um, but I do not believe that they have to specifically be in your geographic area. Heather asked, referring to question 1A, it says each COE or SELPA or consortia will submit an application for one resource lead. Does this mean that they can only apply for one area and not multiple areas? Technically, um, you can apply for multiple areas. It would be a separate application for each area. Yes, Julie, you can submit separate applications for two lead areas. The application and supporting documents should be included in a single email. There is no maximum size of the email attachments, um, just the narrative. Okay, if you have additional questions about this webinar that are not answered in the RFA, that is going to be where most of your questions will be answered is in the RFA document. And if you have additional questions, you may, um, the budget is not included in the 15 page limit. Uh, it could be a supporting document. And let's see, I think that is all that we have for you today. Um, like I said, if you have additional questions, we are available by email at specialeducationleads at cde.ca.gov. And I think that's it. Thank you so much. Oh, let me answer a couple other questions. Can a partner in a collaborative be a for-profit organization? And Jeanette, we are actually waiting for an answer to that question um, from our legal department. So as soon as we get back from legal, we will give you that answer. And it will be included on the question and answers document as well. There are no required items on the cover page. All right, thank you so much for attending our technical assistance webinar, and we look forward to reading through your applications.